Something unfamiliar began making its way through space one day, appearing from the Radiant, some point near Deneb, the largest star of the Cygnus constellation. In fact, it was not just one thing, shooting across at immeasurable speed from unknown space towards our planet, and it also did not appear in any describable way either. Furthermore, we did not ever see what had occurred until after whatever was there had already vanished. What we found was only what it had left, the mark it had irrevocably made on Earth. Just a blurry, intangible trace for some, a never-ending heritage to others. Since the incident, there are six areas that have been cordoned off and put under strict control. We call them visitation zones. Whatever had touched the soil, it seemed to have disappeared again before anyone could get close. What we did find was an intangible trail of destruction, inexplicable anomalies in the landscape, where laws of physics are changed like child's play, weather phenomena that seem to stop at the threshold, shimmering clouds that swallow anything passing through them, balls of lightning wandering up and down electrical lines and skewed door frames that no longer lead into the buildings they were built into. What are now stretches of uninhabitable land were once vibrant forests, agricultural fields and lakes, but also populated towns. Our zone was once the quiet town of Harmond. These zones hold uncountable mysteries, most of them thought to be inaccessible. Inside, Born from its anomalous cradle lie scientific wonders, artifacts that many believe hide the answers to the visitor's origin. Yet navigating through even the most sunlit path can be a risky endeavor. The best we can do is take one step at a time, observe, and try to learn a little more about it every day. This is a vignette from the world of Roadside Picnic, a Soviet-Russian science fiction novel written by Arkady and Boris Natanovich Strugatsky, originally published in 1972. A story about extraterrestrial visitors suddenly arriving on several spots on Earth and disappearing quickly after without ever being seen. The sites they landed at were forever changed, leaving strange mysteries behind that humanity tries to crack to maybe propel their own development forward. But one or two years before I eventually read the Strugatsky novel, the title had an entirely different association for me, not one in Soviet literature, but in strange audio form. An alluring interchange of dark and melancholic music, broken up with field recordings, sound experiments, and unexplained things caught in the ether. A project known by its full name as the Roadside Picnic radio podcast. Once discovered, the site would open to a grid of episodes, every one of them decorated with an artwork, a number, and a title. You'd be left with an internet mystery. The site did not go far to illuminate what the project was, what each episode would be, not even a publication date. Eventually, you would pick any one of them and click play. You are listening to Roadside Picnic Radio Podcast. And right after, you are plunged into a wave of noise. A highly distorted, lost and foregone sounding transmission, then fading into an opening moderation with a warm welcome. Hello, and welcome back to another episode of Roadside Picnic. I'm your host, Joshua. The theme for this month's segment is Bleak and Lost. 
you get a few sentences about the episode's theme, and sporadically a few remarks on the project itself. Bleak is defined as being bare, desolate, without hope. Lost is to have gone astray, no longer to be found. What follows is an orderly rhythm of three or more tracks, sounds and ambiences from a wide assortment of genres and sources. Between these sets, the host goes through the pieces one by one in ping pong order, notes artists, album titles and publication details. The podcast is unmistakably at home in the wider radius of the world of Strugatsky's novel, though with a notable American skew of its original Eastern European cultural roots. I stop to wonder how an imagined audio project made by modern-day Georgian and Russian or neighboring Ukrainian artists might sound next to it, what noise floors it might lay down, and what kind of music they might scavenge in the ambient wilds. A closeness to its literary role model also shows in the selection of themes, themes I cannot dissociate from how the fictional zone feels to me, the way it feels in my heart. An intangible and deeply emotional connection to this indescribably strange place that is physically as inhospitable an earthly place could be, yet so inviting, beckoning, so restful and cozy. I can only fail to put across how much this project got me and got to me. I first discovered Roadside Picnic around 2011 by absolute coincidence. While I was an unaware tourist in the world of field recordings, sound art and audio installations, I've had a bit of contact with some of the things that were also directly inspired by the source material in the form of a certain series of games unmistakably molded by way of the countries at the Black Sea. It was, as such, to someone who grew up in Western Europe, my first proper contact with the incorporeal Tristesse Générale of the other half of Europe. Swedish historian and associate professor Gudrun Persson describes how this state of mind historically took root as citizens' lives were changed in the years leading up to the collapse of the Soviet Union in 1991. In the next phase, leading up to the collapse, the tristesse, the listlessness, emerges. The notion is broader than boredom. It is the mixture of tedium and resignation that is found in Soviet daily life, the sense of hopelessness. The tristesse was the antipode of the inflated proclamations and grew out of the gap between the public lie, the propaganda and the Soviet reality. It is the general hopelessness that spread throughout the society a society in which the younger generation had no prospects for the future. Under socialist realism, the culture was supposed to foster future generations of devoted citizens. It was out of just this proclaimed reality, rather than true reality, that the tristesse grew. There are two prominent ambassadors of this heritage to the Western world I know best. One is undoubtedly Tarkovsky's film Stalker. In its cryptically told journey of a field guide, a professor and a writer, to find a hidden room in the center of the zone. Its story incredibly bleak and disoriented, its scenic work industrial and oppressive. While its world is harsh and uncomfortable, it opens a counterpoint, quote, Weakness is a great thing and strength is nothing. When a man is just born, he is weak and flexible. When he dies, he is hard and insensitive. When a tree is growing, it's tender and pliant, but when it's dry and hard, it dies. Hardness and strength are death's companions. Pliancy and weakness are expressions of the freshness of being. The second one, released a whole 28 years later, was my first proper contact in the form of the video game series Stalker. A game where you take the role of one of many loners entering the zone to find riches unique to the anomalous land. A point where the novel, Tarkovsky's film and GSC's game series meet as they all describe the irresistible attraction of the zone's mysterious artifacts and the wishes they grant to whoever survives the indescribable forces sealing them away from an oblivious outside world. 
Looking from 2009 into the present, the game series is followed by an undying mod community that has been keeping it alive for around 15 years, with signs only pointing to its reinforced continuity. If we want to find half of an answer to how a radio podcast created in Eastern Europe would sound like, we can take our ears to some of the most popular modifications created for these titles and the music they include. A milestone in this space is Misery and its countless successors. When you were scrambling into a shelter from the imminent dangers of the zone, there would be a radio sitting on a shelf playing a moody program interspersed with interference, all entrenched in the already heavy atmosphere of the game. It featured music from Soviet rock group Kino. Energetic Russian group Lumen. The subdued tone of Low. Mystifying Danish band The Rumor Set Fire. And even a bit of Johnny Cash. An enticing mix of tracks in Russian and English, laying out a spectrum of emotion, from the rebellion shouting Get Free by Major Lazer, to the strums of these mist-covered mountains of dire straits, brothers in arms. On the philosophical tail end, it makes sense how a place as deadly and alienated as the zone can provide comfort. By its own nature, it attracts the outcast, the rejects, the unordinary mind, the kind seeking adventure, a bit of risk, a bit of reward, and, if yearned for, a possibility of redemption. When outsiders enter, whole lives lived are shed like a coat at the doorstep and you become someone new inside. Its countless threats are what bring its inhabitants together by necessity, in a primal form at the campfire. The zone itself rises as almost a parental figure that nurtures with food, warmth and gifts, but also disciplines with immense force on the smallest misstep. It is, as author Geoff Dyer says, a place to seek asylum from the world. With the atmosphere of the games on my mind, it was only a matter of time until I made my way to their primary inspiration, the Strugatsky novel. I must have lost my tracking, because instead of spending the following days delving into the novel, I found Joshua Zuckerpluda's radio podcast instead. Roadside Picnic was a companion for endless sessions on my own. It seemed like an expansive, distant, yet familiar world to plug into and be carried away. Episode 11, Bleak and Lost, includes work by Estonian composer Arvo Pert, with a soul-touching and eerie piece, Für Alina, from 1976. I found myself coming back to it, again and again. It led me to a quote that seems to spiritually capture my perspective on the project and how it accompanied me. In my dark hours, I have the certain feeling that everything outside this one thing has no meaning. The complex and many-faceted only confuses me, and I must search for unity. What is it, this one thing, and how do I find my way to it? Traces of this perfect thing appear in many guises, and everything that is unimportant falls away. In 2013, the site where the podcast was hosted went quiet. I still made my occasional trips to check for something new, any signs of life, a message or announcements. I re-listened to the catalogue many times, took related artists and records from it. Every once in a while, I'd hear a hint of music somewhere that made me think of it, something that carried that same kind of mood. Around 2015, episodes disappeared from the list, and the site itself followed soon after. 
In 2017, a new landing page appeared, announcing an episode archive and marking the project's lifetime as 2005 to 2013. The idea of creating my own spin-off project has been there for quite a while. After years of listening to the original Roadside Picnic episodes, spreading out from individual tracks and featured records, years of distance after they were no longer available, and over a year of carefully assembling little fragments for something new, have now come together to create Harmon Zone. Like its role model, Harmon Zone is a themed audio project inspired by the greater world and atmosphere of the novel. Each episode is an experimental, moderated trip into the many unknowns of the zone. A trip consisting of curated music, ambience, field recordings, and other pieces of sound. It is a reimagination, a procession, and a public ceremony. Throughout the episode, we move past a saturated history of conflict. We become observers to the remnants and residue of past wars, visit abandoned structures that once played a critical role in a dance on the brink, and catch a glimpse of the sounds it left behind, the music it inspired. The episode tries to stay close to the sentiments that also kindled the original Surugatsky novel, with a state of constant decline, economically and emotionally, in the Soviet Union. On this trek, we visit sounds from the storm. We put our ear to the cold with tracks from Russian sound designers. We walk in the footsteps of the Chechen wars, are guided past defunct military installations, and find maybe a transient home in the warm embrace of old Eastern European folk songs. A theme close to the source material seems natural for a premiere, and nothing's written as to where this journey goes from here. With that, I'm leaving you with the invitation to listen to this first episode of Harmon Zone. It is available with the original release article and in video form on the channel. You'll find links in the description. If you find a piece of yourself in this story, you can support the project by subscribing and sharing this with a friend. And as always, thank you for your viewership. And see you next time. <laughs>